My name is Maria Rivers. I'm 18 years old and I attend Ohio University. I put together this domestic violence film to bring awareness to all of the men and women all over the world who are subjected to this cruel way of a relationship. Domestic violence is super serious and it should definitely be talked about. Domestic violence, in short, domestic abuse, happens when there's a pattern in a relationship that is toxic. For example, if me and my boyfriend are together and he hits me and he says sorry and we get over it and he hits me again, that is a domestic pattern which leads to domestic violence. Domestic violence is used to gain control or control another partner. It is to dehumanize. It is to make one feel small. Domestic violence happens to anyone. No one is exempt. This happens to any gender, any sexual orientation, any race, and anyone who practices any type of religion. According to CDC, one in four women and one in seven men will encounter physical abuse once in their lifetime. And about one in three women and one in six men will encounter sexual violence at least once in their lifetime as well. In the US, over five million acts of domestic violence are upon victims who are 18 and older, and three million of them encounter men. As you watch this film, I hope that this leads you in the light of bringing awareness to abusive situations and ingest. So domestic violence for me is a little different. Um, I was more um, verbally abused in a few relationships. Um, and I allowed that because of some of the things that I went through as a child. Um, I can remember my first grade teacher um, asking me how stupid am I? And I think that started the, the self-doubt um, the, you know, acceptance of people saying that, oh, you don't know that, or you're stupid, or whatever, um, and, you know, as you grow, you change, and situations change, and um, dialogue is different, but really it's the same when it's negative. It's that same feeling. It might not be the same words, but it's that same feeling inside, um, and I took that with me. I allowed a lot of negative things to be said to me. Um, some, I stopped it a little bit with my children, but when I get frustrated with them, I can say some things that I probably uh, should not say. Now I know how to retract and you know apologize, but a lot of times the damage is done. Um, and so I had to go back and ask my children to please forgive me for um, some of the things I've said to them um, because I was comfortable with saying that. Like, oh, they know I love them, you know because I'm doing all this, so me saying this, and you know, you just have to learn and from your mistakes. I say this to say that that's how people become victims, because it has happened to them, they accept it, and they accept anything that people say to them, because it's like, oh, they still love me, because they're still talking to me, or they're still providing for me, or things like that. My name is Amara Rivers. I have a daughter. Her name is Marley. I am also 26 years old. So I was 16 years old. I knew a guy and we were close. Close enough for me to not to expect the situation to turn out how it did. So we were friends not really lovers at that point. And I went over his house casually just for us to hang out. His mother said she was gonna leave and she left us. And when she left, I was downstairs in his basement 
watching. At first, he was playing video games or something. And it went from that to, you know, his mother yelling up the stairs, hey, I'm getting ready to go. And, you know, he was like, all right, that's cool. And she left the house. And next thing I know, he stops his video games. And I'm on the futon. And he, like, gets on top of me. And he's like kissing the people in y'all hard. And I'm like, whoa, you know, like, I'm not really feeling this right now. So I'm like, okay, stop. So he stops for a second, stops kissing. And then he gets back on me. And the next thing I know, he had me pinned down to the futon. I'm Tiffany, I'm 29. I have two beautiful girls, Sophia and Olivia, five and three. Uh, today I am here to talk about just unpacking traumas in general. Uh, I have been sexually abused since I was probably six. Um, this has started with people in my family and it has transitioned until I was older. My last situation with my child's father uh, put me in a very dark space. Um, I was mentally abused. I was abused in other ways as well. Um, and it has taught me a lot in general and has taught me on what to teach my kids and how to raise them. I want my kids to know that their feelings will never be invalidated in regards to anything. I want them to know that they can come to me as a safe haven, that they can feel protected to talk to me about anything, especially when it comes to their bodies. If I could be honest, I've been dreading this since the day I ended my last relationship. I thought that I was too pretty, too smart, to not naive to be in the same chair as the other women. And if you are thinking the things I thought, I'm gonna stop you in your tracks because it can happen to anyone. I was a part of a domestic relationship and it started off how it's supposed to. Movies, chocolate, feet rubs, okay? Nails done, hair done. Until the sunshine kind of went away. Get off of me. I don't like what we're doing. Get off of me. My no wasn't enough for him. So, you know, he forced himself onto me went inside my pants, took off my clothes, well, my bottom. <laughs> and uh, when that happened, I was just like, at this point, exhausted with my no. So it went from a strong no to a, okay, we're here. So, you know, he forced himself on top of me. I stopped fighting him, I laid there. It went from me being pinned down to him relaxing because my body was relaxed. I told you no, and my no was disregarded, you know? So that means that is rape because I wasn't consenting the situation whatsoever. My last relationship consisted of my child's father. Uh, we met when I was 18, he was 17, we were in college, and we were very great friends, um, definitely grew a lot in many ways, but as we got older um, and went through infidelities and other things, um, having two kids and, you know, dealing with postpartum and dealing with narcissism, um, it put me in a very dark space. Um, I was out of character, there were times I lashed out, um, and I hold myself accountable that I was not the perfect person. Um, I had a smart mouth, <laughs> and 
Um, I just acted in ways that I knew like was not Tiffany. I never been the type to go through phones. Okay. But something led me into my ex-partner's phone. And the things I saw, I wish I could take back. And for anyone in a relationship, don't go through phones. Okay? That's not the way you want to find out. You want to find out genuinely. And if that person isn't being honest, that just shows you who that person is and what you need to do. The one thing I can say is, once you break trust, there's no going back. And you should leave. There's no rebuilding trust. I met up to close the situation, which was our relationship, and it was a encounter I wish I could never be a part of. There were clothes on the garage floor, there were Kool-Aid on my car, there was a high-speed chase on the road. Someone I knew that I thought was my friend, like maybe a little more because we did flirt. I wouldn't think they would take advantage of me like that, you know? Like, it was not a situation I would recommend for anyone, you know? but. I started to not victimize myself, but I put a lot of blame on me. Like, I don't know, was it what I wore? Was it, you know, his mom leaving us? That was the, you know, the green light for him to do what he had to do? Was it me even saying yes to being there? Like, I had no idea his mother was leaving. You know, we were teenagers, so I thought someone was gonna be there, but they left. So, of course a teenage boy wants to have sex, but doesn't mean I was ready for it. I did a lot of self-sabotage because I was carrying more and more weight than, for other people than I was me. And I was not Tiffany, and I had to get back to who I was. Um, 2020 has opened my eyes up to a lot of humbling situations. Me and my daughter were involved in a car accident. Um, where we both could have lost our lives. Thank God for car seats and seat belts. Um, and then just dealing with the transition of, you know, stepping out of being in a relationship with someone for almost eight years and, you know, knowing them for over 10 now. Um, it's a lot to unpack, it's a lot to unfold because now for me, I'm very defensive when it comes to relationships. I'm very defensive on who has access to me. Um, but I, I watch out for red flags. Um, that's a huge one. Um, because of everything that I've been through, I know what to look for. And I know what I will not tolerate. But I did get gifts after that encounter. And what do you do? You know, this is your first relationship ever. You stay. You think it's going to get better. You believe that the trust can be somehow mended in any way. Well, what you're doing is you're endangering yourself more by staying after you've seen that happen. Abusers don't stop. They do what you allow, and if you allow them to come back after humiliating you and hurting you, you are causing yourself collateral damage. When someone destroys your stuff, that's, that's domestic. When someone puts your life in danger by chasing you down the road, that's domestic. Verbally hurting someone purposely is domestic and those are red signs to run. Everyone told me to run. But you know, you don't wanna to be too hard headed where you fall too hard on your head and it's hard to get back up. Take the easy way out. If someone is saying that your relationship is a red flag, run as far and as fast as you can. Now, luckily, I got out of, out of there within three months. I know some people stay with nine, three years, five years. They marry them, have children, because they think they're going to change. And I'm going to tell you right now, 
the worst thing you can do is date potential. I think he's gonna change. I know who he could be. I know what he could be. No. Consent means that you're allowing it to happen to you. You're inviting that into your space. You're saying yes. That is consent. Consent is a strong, confident yes. For me, consent is, you know, a, allowing someone to have access to my body without them taking it away from me. Um, oftentimes, women feel that validation, um, and that's the way you have to do it. to stay with someone. That's not it. Um, if you don't want to, you don't have to. No means no. Um, and I want women to know that if they have been abused in any way, um, they can talk to people. Uh, there are many resources out there. There are ways to get you help. But you don't have to go through this alone. Um, if you want any resources, you can reach out to myself or Dee um, or more. And we'll be more than happy to get you guys the help you need because as women, you deserve it. Um, men do not have that power over you. They don't have that power over your body. And I want everyone to know um, to be strong and stand up for yourself. Um, be intentional about who has that type of energy to you because sex is a, it's an energy transfer um, and it's a connection. And if you don't feel that connection, then you don't have to. Um, you don't you're have not to obligated. Somebody. You're not. You're not obligated to nobody but yourself. So take care of you first, whatever that may mean for you. And I affirm that you know, whoever you pray to, um, that they have, they will nourish your mind, your body, your soul, and that you take care of yourself. You think this guy, you think this girl could be who you want them to be, but you cannot change anyone except for yourself. And I think that's the hardest pill to swallow because we want the ones we love to be who we want them to be. But nobody has that power over them except for them. Through my relationship, I started to not look at me the same. I saw myself drowning. I didn't like who I was. I didn't like my face. I didn't like the things I love about myself. I didn't like my hair. I didn't like the way I dressed. I didn't like any of that. I felt like this big and you know, it did something to my self-esteem until I decided no more. When I decided no more, it, 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 it did something to me that I will forever be grateful for. It gave me a leg up to be a boss. I'm gonna be real. I bossed up. I bossed up and I'm not boasting. I'm just saying. When you leave a toxic relationship, you boss up. And I bossed up by digging in school, indulging myself in school, indulging myself in family, make, making time for God, talking to God, journaling, therapy, crying, screaming. Any emotion I felt, I felt it wholeheartedly. And that is the steps you take to heal. Stand firm on your boundaries. Do not allow someone to feel like they have that much power over your mind. You are in control of your thoughts, you are in control of your mind, you are in control of your body. And your feelings. And your feelings. Never let someone invalidate those. If you do not want to do something, if you don't want to stand by someone, no matter what it is, you do not have to. Dear Marley, so all I really have to say, and the best way I can think of is to Love yourself, honor God, and honor others. I love you so much, and I'm very grateful to be your mom. I want you to know that one day you'll find a relationship, 
And when you do find that relationship, what you should look for is someone who loves you as much as you love them. You should look for someone who has healthy relationships with their friends, God, their family. You should look for someone who looks more into your heart than the surface of things. Um, you might not understand that now, but you'll understand later on in life. So until then, boys are yucky. <laughs> Dear Sophia and Olivia, I want you guys to always remember to find beauty within yourself. Always be intentional about whatever it is that you desire. Mommy will always be there for you every step of the way. Whatever you need, I am here. If you need to talk about your feelings, I will never invalidate those. I want you guys to always know that you are beautiful, you are smart, you are brave. You are protected divinely, and Mommy will always be there to guide you. I want you guys to know that you are very resilient, very strong, and I'm already proud of the little girl that you are today. Continue to be bright, continue to be brave, continue to prosper every step of the way. Mommy loves you. Dear Amara, Maya, and Maria. The one thing that I want you to always do is to stay true to yourself. Stay true to yourself. There are a lot of things that can trigger low self-esteem. So you have to be secure within yourself. It's a, it's a very hard thing to do. When the world that we live in is so materialistic and visual, you can kind of lose sight. You can think your hair is not right, your skin, your body. Um, you can look at your achievements and think that they are not achievements um, because of, you're looking at somebody through somebody else's window, which they're only showing you what they want you to see. Um, so you have to really be true to yourself um, and know those insecurities that you have and work on them. Be careful who you allow in your life because there are people that just take, there are takers, there are some givers. You come from a family of giving, of givers, but you have to be careful who you give to because sometimes that's all they want to do is to receive and not give. So surround yourself with people who are going to equally love you as you love them. Now it might be different because people have different love languages. Find that love language and appreciate it. Find your love language and give. I just want you to have a happy life. I want you to keep your family close because in the end, those are the people who are going to be by your side when you're breathing your last breath or when you're down and completely out. Can't run for family. So appreciate them, respect them, and show your babies the way. Resources. For someone who's afraid to speak up, I just want them to know, like, you know, don't wait years down the line of, say your truth you know there's someone who, who has that ear to listen there's always someone who's there for you you know just the closest person to you you should let them know and if they're uncomfortable and they don't help you more than likely they know someone who can I would like to give a special thanks out to my sister Amara who has found it in herself to tell her story to educate. I'd like to thank my mother, Sabrina, who found it in herself also to educate her side of domestic violence and what she's been through. And I will also like to send a special thanks to Tiffany. Thank you so much 
Um, and one of the girls who were going to share their story couldn't make it, so I want to say thank you to you too. Thank you for volunteering to share such a powerful story, and I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to get around to you, but thank you. I'd also like to thank everyone supporting this film, looking for it, watching it. It's because of you guys I do what I do, which is create films and rallies to bring each other together to get us all aware. Awareness is the first step. So thank you for all of these amazing opportunities, and I will be filming another one very soon. See you soon. Stay safe.